So after I glued these two pieces of cedars together and the soundboard is completely ready to work with, um, the things I have to do before drawing the lines and place and mark the sound hole and the bridge is to make one side completely clean to see the grains exactly and decide where is the best place of the soundboard to, to be on the top of the instrument. So let's make it clean by uh, hand plane and uh, some cabinet scraper. So as you can see here, uh, I finished cleaning the one side to, with using the hand plane and the scraper. The soundboard is so soft, you know, you can see it's like a paper uh, already. And it's almost like three millimeter right now all the way. And I'm going down to two millimeter after. And because I want to uh, implant the ring around the sound hole, uh, we need some thickness uh, to do these things and then bring the soundboard to the final uh, thickness. The sound also is so close. Now after gluing the soundboard, when I tap it, in the same thickness, I think the, the both sides hmm, sounds like each other. So let me show you the grains and the lines from the closer look. So as you can see here in the video, the grains are very beautifully shown and you can see the grains, the narrow lines are at the side and the wider line at the center. This is my decision only for this wood and it can be different from wood to wood and from a different wood. I decided to do this on this soundboard because of a lot of reason like this, this wood at the side was very, very soft too much. I think it, it was not a, it doesn't, it didn't have a good uh, side line. So I decided to put the wide lines in the center. Also as an experiment, I want to see the sound to see how it sounds after this. So this is a final look at my soundboard cedar with uh, one side uh, planed and the other side is, is like this. I just planed these parts to make just some kind of flat surface to have a more uh, precise planing. This is the thickness right now. It's almost same in all parts but it it will be very very less than this let's go and put the ball on the soundboard draw the lines place the sound hole and mark the bridge place and other process I'm going to mark ball it's very good if you imagine that the strings is like 60 centimeter so the space between the neck joint and the bridge would be 40 centimeter and from the neck joint to the knot would be 20 centimeter so in a normal situation the sound hold would be at 20 so 20 for the neck 20 for the center of the sound hole and 20 for the bridge most of the wood makers make a little bit sound hole upper so it's it's not completely at the at this 20 centimeter so they leave some space for the bridge uh, also for making the more bossy sound as well as have a space to 
uh, move to for the player to have more space on a plectrum, on a misrab or risha to play um, in a wider space. So I decided to place the sound hole uh, at the 18.5. Uh, normally it would be for, for, for this oud that I decided to have uh, 58.5 centimeter for the strings. Uh, every 19.5 would be a place like 19.5 for the neck, 19.5 for the center of the sound hole, and 19.5 from the center of the sound hole to the bridge. But I decided to move a little bit sound hole uh, more close to the neck. So I place it on the 18.5 instead of 19.5. It's just like one centimeter going up here in, uh, and place of the bridge would be at the 40, I think, yes? It is uh, on the 39, sorry. 39 centimeter for the bridge, 18.5 for the center of the sound hole, 12, uh, 10 centimeter from the bridge to the end of the bow. Everything is look li looks nice, but a little bit big for the sound hole, it's 12. Normally, it would be something between, for this size of the wood, for the geometry, it would be between 10 to 11, but I decided to make it in 12. Uh, the next step is to make a hole, the center hole for the, for the sound hole, and then uh, I'm gonna use this uh, tool. I'm fixing this shaft in the center with this tool. I'm going to make circles uh, with the rotor to uh, on the soundboard to make the inlay around the sound hole also also for the sound hole. And fix the soundboard sometimes. So this would be uh, the sound hole and next I'm going to make another channel around the sound hole for the inlay. Uh, all right, the second channel is made. It's done. While working with setter, you have to be careful about pushing any of your tools. I, uh, I removed any bracelet, any watch in your hand, any finger, any mm, a ring or anything from your hand because it's so soft and it can be easily, uh, you can easily uh, make some hole on things. And now the inlay is finished. Uh, I put the ring in and uh, I, I, I described this process. I showed this process in uh, the other video uh, separately. Uh, I sand it a little bit. It's uh, completely flat. Uh, I'm going to uh, cut the extra wood around the sound hole, around the uh, ball. So I, I cut the rest of the wood. Also, the head is completely uh, calibrated and it's uh, at the place that I want on the line. 
so I go to the back side of the wood. I need to flatten this part also. But uh, before doing the plane, I have to uh, separate the parts of the wood and gouge the thickness with, the, uh, with my tool. So um, I need to know each part's thicknesses. <coughs> so I make it in the different sections. I separate in the di different sections. I calibrate this, uh, the, the, this is my handmade uh, thickness gouge that I made another video separately, just how to make this tool. Okay. 2.5, 2 2.5, 2.3. 2 I already actually reach the thickness that I want. I, I cannot uh, remove that much material. It's 2.4, 2.5, 2.3. Okay, actually I, I got this thickness right now, is to put the ball on the surface to make the line, this is the upside, calibrate on the line. And this is almost our sound hole. Perfect. So now let's uh, plane the wood to reach the thickness that I want. All right, this is the thickness that I gouged here right now. Uh, I, I will I separate uh, these sections in a different parts like. Uh, This area, this area, and also it is one, two, three, four, five, six, six area. I separate this wood into. The I'm I need two millimeter in this area. One point eight, one point eight here, <coughs> two here. Two also here and one point eight here and two point three here. Two point three millimeter here, one point eight millimeter here, two here, two here, one point eight and two. These two, this one point eight. 2 and 2.3 so now I have 2.4 in this area so 0 0.4 I have to remove from this area 2 almost I have 2 here nothing I can remove just uh, need some scraper to just uh, make it flat 1.8 I, I need to remove a little bit here also this is, I got some, so I don't need to have to remove too much here. Two here, so a lot of removing. And 2.3, this is also, this is 2.5 here already. This is 2.3, so I don't need to remove from this part. This line, I mean. So this is the strategy. So let's uh, paint. The wood. So I starting, I start planning these areas. This is that uh, I'm going straight through the grain from the bottom to the top. Uh, I need to remove 
like this is 2.42 that I want to almost keep this uh, area and very few from here and also very few from here so just just with some passes to make it kind of flat will be enough Okay, let's check if we reach the final destination or not. Just uh, let's go and let's check again. Yes. Two. It's 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, or this area. It's 2.5 now. Okay. 